Hey guys, this is Az here and here's a quick overview of the UK Nationals as I saw them and that took place last weekend in Birmingham. An absolutely fantastic weekend. If I'm honest, it's Tuesday now and this is the first day I actually feel kind of fully recovered after them. Um, it was an absolutely uh, amazing uh, event uh, run by as Davy McCourse for Fantasy Flight uh, UK Nationals. We had eight different games, I believe, um, took place over the weekend. Not sure if that's 100% right. I'll correct it maybe after if it's not. Um, and just, yeah, it was great. So I'm going to give a brief overview of um, my kind of journey through the weekend, the Friday, the Saturday, the Sunday, chatting a little bit about what went on each day. Of course, I'm going to talk quite heavily about Netrunner uh, and what went on with all the Netrunner stuff. Um, but I also will talk about um, SDVM and the event as a whole and the venue and such. So a bit of an intro and then I'll go through the days. Um, so kicking off with the Friday then, I uh, arrived in Birmingham, absolutely um, epic day, it was absolutely beautiful um, and the city's gorgeous, it really was. The first thing I saw was this actually, um, the Potato Man van, yeah it was closed, made me a bit sad being Irish coming over and thinking about getting a baked potato at 8 o'clock in the morning since being up at 4am would have been awesome but there you go. Um, took a walk through the city, saw some beautiful art. Um, the City Hall, a, a bunch of gorgeous buildings. Like I'm almost tempted to go back to Birmingham and just um, do the touristy thing just for a weekend. It was absolutely lovely and um, an absolutely great day. So really enjoyed it. It's just taking a bit of time to sit and look at the place. Got some pictures here. You can kind of see a little uh, nosy at some of the things I was interested in. And um, the BFG's Dream Dar Jar, Dream Jar <laughs> Library was epic. Really cool to see, and some lovely pictures of the canal and the cathedral and everything there. So. Props to the city um, and what, what a great day. I probably shouldn't have walked about more heavy jeans as much as I did because by the end of the Friday, uh, I was already starting to get a bit raw and a bit sore on my feet uh, and on my legs and that was not a great call considering how much standing up I was going to have to do over the weekend. So... Went into the venue then, um, early in the morning, and um, before everything kind of got kicked off, and met up with the SDVM guys as they were just kind of finishing up the setup, and wow, like, just look at the venue, right? Now, I have to be really open and honest here, this was my first time going to the, main, the mainland, or going to you know, England or Scotland, across the water basically, for us from Northern Ireland, and seeing this venue. I wasn't there at Nationals last year, but I've heard stories about what it was like, and how difficult the conditions were for the judges and, judges and the players, and, and getting water, and just the whole thing. SDVM just picked up, a fantastic place, set it up amazingly, and boy was it just epic to, to walk in and see the, the quality of the venue they secured. So, so happy. Um, so what I basically did on the first day was I checked out some of the Star Wars LCG stuff, some of the Conquest stuff, just kind of looked in. Met a bunch of lovely guys in the Starbucks downstairs and we basically sat and chatted for an hour about Imperial Assault uh, and Game of Thrones and Netrunner. And then I actually jumped and sat along and watched with uh, the round one with Sam actually and his friend Kieran. Watched the first round of Imperial Assault, a couple of pictures of some of the models there um, for you guys to take a look at. Really nice. For anyone thinking about getting into that game, I dove into it really hard the past two weeks and there's a lot of negativity around it and what it was like when it first came out and I think they've actually got away from that really nicely they've got a real diversity to the models and, and units and sort of traits and stuff in the game now and they have brought out a significant amount of errata for some of those core set um, and Royal Guard and, and sort of officer uh, cards for example that were just too strong in the skirmish mode and now the game seems to be really getting into its stride if you're thinking about Imperial Assault get a demo game ha try, it out, try it out I think you'll be impressed. I kind of wish I'd played Imperial Salt on the Friday, actually. But anyway, there was more stuff to do, so on to that. So the president of servers was being run on the other side of the city. I believe it was Alex White, um, supported by uh, the Wayland's Forge uh, guys, the, the store there. Um, I'm not sure who else was involved in the setup, if I'm completely honest, but it seemed great. So this is a three-person team championship. I managed to get across to see the last two rounds of the day. A few pictures of the, the venue and the groups here. I'm pretty sure most of the people there were like, who the heck is this guy? Why is he taking photos and why is he creeping over our shoulders? Um, I was trying not to be too stalker-esque, but I met up with the Team Irish guys, got, got to um, watch some of their games and it was fantastic. Got to see a great game where a uh, data dealer ended up selling off 14 points of agendas so the court couldn't score enough points to win. That was an epic game to watch in the first time seeing that, which was cool. And we did stop into Wayland's Forge as well. Only got a quick picture, unfortunately, I don't have many pictures of the store, but a lovely little store. Great venue, you know, not too far from the city centre. Lovely staff for the, you know, 15 minutes we were in there. And they seemed to donate a pretty hefty amount of prizes to the, the, the community run event as well, in terms of just vouchers and things to spend in the store. Lovely, like, got to super appreciate that. And I love that the community said, you know, we've got Netrunner Saturday and Sunday. A lot of people are going to be there for the Friday. Let's give them something to do. 
And I, it's something I've spoken to guys a lot about in the, in the Irish community, especially um, on Sunday evening and, and sort of the start of this week. I love that at all. If you've got to travel a brave distance, you're going to have to probably stay over, try and get some community stuff to make it worth everyone's while. I think they did a really good job of that. I'm hoping there's going to be some coverage of the matches. I do think there was um, a setup for podcasting and stuff there, though I'm not too sure if they were recording the games. But well done to those guys and, and super appreciate all the work there. Uh, I believe it was Laurie Poulter's team. Was it Laurie, Chris and... Forgive me, I can't remember the third person's name. I'm probably going to get lynched for that. Sorry, but anyway, I think it was them that won. So, uh, Saturday. Wow. Yeah, Saturday was when everything kicked off. So, up at, up at like half six to get showered and ready. Um, and at the venue for half seven, met up with all the guys. The SDV and staff were on point. Had us all together. Give us a rundown of what was going to happen, where all the registration was, how the meet and greets were going to work. And, you know, really solidify the timetable, which was great. And registration kicked off. And all went pretty smoothly. You know, still quite a lot of people leaving to last minute, but 157 Netrunner players through ourselves, um, through myself and Peter, one of the other judges registering. And then we also had CJ and, and Savvy who were entering into tone like machines. Uh, apologies for any incorrect name spellings. Uh, it wasn't our best point of the day, unfortunately. Um, some things had to slip to let the kind of more uh, important day game things kind of carry on if that makes sense so i am sorry because i know some of that stuff should have changed um, and it wasn't fantastic when we got some of the more difficult names and um, for me i got a couple of quick shots of the day so just as the net runner was kicking off at the start of round one quick selfie um, and this poor guy <laughs> he actually looked round into my selfie which meant i went over and took a quick selfie with him before his game started <laughs> i hope he sees the video please put me a comment below if you do because uh, i know i was uh, overly forward and happy and just trying to be my bouncy self and um, with a community who i'd never really met in person and uh, you know, just trying to break some ice there and just meet some new people and hopefully it uh, didn't come off too crazily. Um, got to see the Team Ireland guys, all them in matching t-shirts. A few other guys unfortunately weren't in this photo as well and they were there which was, which was just great and then pretty much um, didn't get a chance to do another photo or another video until the end of round six when we had a dinner break. So I've got basically no more coverage, no photos, no videos or anything because it was just flat out. It was good though. It was smooth. Um, I think everything ran. We, we ended up starting about, about 10 or 15 minutes late and ended up catching up and going ahead of ourselves because Coop's schedule, they, they, I mean, all the judges were on the same level, but Coop in my mind was a great leader, great organizer, had the schedule really well done and you took control of all the situations very well, but brought on a lot of feedback from the other judges, which I think shows a great um, use of sort of leadership and management and sort of like just um, supporting everyone and, and having that team of judges come across in a good way and I think he did a great job of that and I think the schedule allowed us to catch up in time and even we could have probably shortened like the dinner break for example um, but I think keeping it to a schedule that everyone was, was fine with was good um, so I only got kind of a couple of last pictures at the end I do have this picture here of the scariest play mat oh my mm. So glad I didn't come up against this lovely guy. I had a very brief conversation with him um, just uh, about how his games went and stuff that day. But that play mat, man, no, not for me. That's night nightmares. Nightmares and just I'm deleting the pictures straight after this video, actually. <laughs> Um, got a couple of pictures of the group um, just as everything was wrapping up on the Swiss, but generally everything went well. Um, one quick thing before we sort of leave the chat about the Sunday and how great it was. I want to have a quick Netrunner discussion with you guys. I want to say it's time to take some ownership. Look after your sleeves, look after your deck lists, and look after your deck. And it's a premier event, there's a trip to Worlds in the line, and no matter whether you think you're going to come first, or 156th or 7th, your deck list needs to be right, your sleeves need to be unmarked, you know, um, you have to keep things in order and we did a huge amount of deck checks and uh, big shout out to peter who i think covered off a ton of that and um, we validated every single list for legality so checking agenda points checking your know, number of cards checking influence and in mwl spend every single deck list we checked for that and then we did a huge number of deck checks including going into the sunday morning checking every single deck that was going into the top 16 and you know, just be careful with that stuff, guys. It's important that you look after it. And I think um, a bit of a call out to say, you know, if you're one of the top guys, if you're setting an example, you know, be a positive example. You know, look after that stuff. You know, turn up on time. It takes a commitment from as DV, it takes a commitment from the judges, it takes a commitment from players to book hotels and travel and all the things it takes to come to an event. Don't let your deck lists or little things like the, the rules end up pulling the rug out from under you. Don't let it happen um, because it's, it's we hated to do it. There was just quite a few things where guys had to have the decks amended, game losses uh, awarded and um, the such, and I hated having to do it. Uh, but 
when it's a premier level event and there's big, big prizes on the line, you've got to be thorough um, from both sides of the table. So just, you know, look after yourselves. And I hope everyone feels like we judged fairly in the day. I really do feel like we did. So into the Sunday, the top 16, I felt ran um, really smoothly. I think everything ran the time. Again, we probably even gave a little bit too much time between like the lunch and the, and the afternoon session. Um, but I think it was good. I think everyone had plenty of time to breathe and, and you know, check their decks and make sure they were okay and get something to eat. Um, and when we got down to the top six, we started putting a judge to each table. So myself, uh, CJ and Coop all grabbed a table each and we just sat with them. And I think, you know, it's, it's, it is difficult for, you know, to not, put yourself into the game, you know, you're there just to keep things right, especially when there's lots of people standing around watching because the, the, the spectators will very often jump in and say, oh, turntable, or don't forget your credit, or don't forget your bad publicity, where they really shouldn't. And as a judge, you try and leave it as late as possible before anything has happened, like before a second or third click has happened, that the board state would then uh, have to be reverted back. You don't want to say anything about the board state until you absolutely have to. Um, the running joke of the weekend, somehow, and I'm I both am happy and apologetic about this, but the running joke seemed to be uh, recurring <laughs> wizard credits. And I feel awful, but also good about it because put those recurring credits on your wizard, re replenish them at the start of your turn, because it's important when you've got employee strikes coming down, cerebral statics coming down, timings of trashings, and you're got controlling the message and IG prevalent in the top 16. Look after that stuff. Keep your board state right, guys. Keep your opponent's board state right. Um, yeah, it's, it seems silly. It seems crazy. But as I say, you know, complete a click, you know, start your turn. Don't jump over things. And talking about that then, probably the best game of the whole day for me, for me personally, it was getting to sit beside Dave Hoyland playing Tim Fowler. Dave Hoyland playing his, uh, his Industrial Genomics and Tim playing his Wizard. And just what a game. Just start to end. Fantastic. Huge pressure from Tim. Double slums out against IG. Ridiculous amounts of um, just pressure put on the Dave Hoyland that... I could never have thought of ways out of and I got to see you know his thought process a little bit and I got to see how he creatively thought his way out of difficult situations and it came down to the wire absolutely came down to the wire um, and it was just a great game and the thing I want to really get across from a judging and a viewer's point of view and a fan of Netrunner is those guys played that game so cleanly very cleanly I have a huge amount of respect for those guys taking their time taking it one click at a time you know, waiting until the other person had discarded down to hand size before mandatorily drawing. That stuff, they played quickly, but they play, played cleanly. Um, they played, like, just, oh, it was fantastic. It was just Netrunner at its very, very, very best. And I have a huge amount. I'm truly humbled and, and, and honoured to get a chance to spend and sit and watch those games. And, um, yeah, just, just I think everyone enjoyed that. And I had many people tell me that, you know, they would have paid £25 just to sit and watch those games all day. And unfortunately, we just couldn't fit enough people around the table. But I do hope uh, through the awesome guys at uh, the Neo Reading Grid and the Dead Channel podcast, they got it all covered. And I've even watched some of the matches already myself on Twitch after sitting right there. Um, and their coverage seemed to be great. The commentary was great. They, I think they had Chris Dyer on and a couple of other guys on as well during the day. Fantastic. It was really good. Go check them out, the, the Dead Channel and Neo Reading Grid guys. So overall, entire weekend fantastic i should say of course if you don't really know i'm pretty sure all of you will know that it was uh, vic with his kate rabbit hole kate and uh, ctm decks that won out in the day and for vic to knock tim fowler down to the lower bracket tim to fight his way back up and win the first game to force a second game man just unbelievable absolutely unbelievable and it came down to the last turn like what more could you ask for the grand final to go to two games and the second game to literally come down to the last turn where either of them could have won. And it was a GFI, Global Food Initiative, on a film critic that sealed the deal. I mean, what 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 can you say? Just absolutely fantastic stuff. Watch that coverage, follow the channel, check out the Twitter. You know, there was some amazing coverage. Unfortunately, I didn't get to do a lot of my usual videos and posts and stuff that I like to do when I'm competing at events and um, between rounds and such, because it was just so busy. It was a great busy though, and there was so much coverage from everyone else there. So check it out, guys. Um, Quick thing then, so a couple of personal highlights for me. 
I got one game of net running all weekend. Friday, Saturday, Sunday, one game. But it was against Mark Mottram with Dave Hoyland also joining us for a little while to kind of talk through the deck choices with Mark. Against that IG deck, I'd never played against it before despite seeing it many times on stream and it was a fantastic game. I ended up losing in the end. I, think I got another like five or six cards in his uh, in his R&D and because I think he showed it to me at the end. It was just, like five agendas out of six or something like that. Um, fantastic, really lovely game. Uh, really couldn't find my film critic. And uh, it was uh, truly enjoyable. And I think I have a huge amount of respect for anybody that takes the game seriously enough to devote a couple of evenings a week to practice, to form those groups of you know two, three, four players that just play together a lot and learn those high lever decks because um, no one, I don't think anyone can legitimately say the same people keep getting into the top because of IDs or the same people getting into the top because of you know luck of the draw or whatever. The same guys keep getting into the top because they are good. They are good. They think of, they think of things in a way that I can't even imagine, but I'm not talking about it anymore. Um, this is a cool thing, right? The guys in my local community got this play mat printed for me because, uh, as a bit of a thank you, it was a really awesome gesture. I absolutely loved it. And um, because there was a few guys over, this was from the regionals in May that I ran in Bangor. There was a couple of guys over from Scotland and England. I thought I'd bring it with me to the nationals and hopefully get them to sign it. What ended up happening was this. <laughs> so I basically got signings from everybody. I got Alice Reese is on there, Dave Hoyland, and I think Tim's on there, uh, Tagore's on there, I think CJ, like basically Coop, all the judges, we got them on there. And uh, we've got Jordan Saxby on there, like just um, Paula Paula Norris, who does all the fantastic, yeah, check these out, all the fantastic um, like kind of chibi style, anime style alt arts, which are just stunning. Um, she was on there and I just loved that everyone got so involved in it. And it, I didn't mean it to catch so much attention, but people kept coming over and catching the playmat and going, this is really cool. And I think it was a kind of a reminder that at the core of everything and the competitive netrunner scene and all the things with the MWL list and you know all the ups and downs and stuff and degenerate decks and all those things, the core community is strong in netrunner. It's positive. And although those groups are kind of clicky people, you know, you have your local metas and especially at the nationals, we have groups from Bristol and London and Nottingham and all these and Edinburgh and, and the Irish teams, of course, coming across. Um, Overall, the community is super welcoming, super positive. Got an awesome, awesome selfie with Alice, awesome selfie uh, with Mark as well. Um, hopefully, as I say, no one thought I was too crazy, um, but just great community. Uh, and focus, just, I, I will ask you guys, I have two wee things to ask at the end, and just before I do, um, I wanna give a huge shout out to the judges. So, um, biggest event I ever sort of judged before was like 30, 35 people, I think, um, to have, this 150 bus tournament, it was only one person bigger than last year, um, I hear, but to have um, Coop, CJ, Steve, uh, Peter and Savvy, those guys were all amazing, very welcoming, really nice guys, put in a ton of work, and I have a huge amount of respect for them. I really struggled uh, not to play on the day, I won't lie, I was like, oh, I was itching, itching to play Netrunner, I, 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 my mind's buzzing to play Netrunner right now, actually, and uh, to, to do, for those guys to, to take the time out and do the judging, huge amount of respect and i think the, the better the event is the less the judges you should see you know they should kind of just kind of be in the background there to support you when you put your hand up they're there to answer your questions and hopefully you don't see a lot of them and i feel like over the weekend the judges weren't really seen that much and that's a good thing um but I humbly rec recognize those guys and say thank you so 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 much um next thing to show is sdvm okay the staff were amazing. First of all, they paid the flights, paid the hotels, breakfast in the hotel, good, good stuff. Meetings at the start of the days, touch points throughout the day. We were checked on every sort of hour. You know, did we need anything? We had radios. You no, know, should we need to get in contact? We had water brought to us every kind of couple of hours to make sure we were, we were keeping hydrated. Which was just like awesome because there really was no chance to to leave. You know, I ate my lunch on the Swiss day, lunch and dinner, and. Um, during you know at Netrunner, I didn't leave. On the Saturday, thankfully, I did get up and got to the staff room and they had hot food put on and, and that was amazing. So as DVM for the venue, for the staff, for the support, for the prep, um, for all the kind of um, information leading up to everything, top notch job. And this is where I have to ask something of you guys. I'm just looking at my notes here to make sure I get this right. Two things to ask of you guys, right? And and you comment below if you disagree, but more importantly, let as DVM know how the event was for you. If I wasn't there last year at the you know the UK Games Expo and, and the Nationals for, for Netrunner in particular with the tent and sort of the issues that I think occurred on the day, 
if this event was great for you, if the venue was good, if the timings were good, if it ran smoothly, if the judges were good, let us DVM know. Because almost certainly, I, I, I don't know for sure, of course, but almost certainly this event was run at a loss for us DVM. You know, you can look at it as a marketing thing and, and the benefits they get from running a big UK event like this, but almost certainly they put a ton of money into a venue for three days in the height of summer in the middle of a big UK city. And, you know, we need to let them know how much we appreciate that. We need to let them know that if they do it again next year, we'll have more players, we'll have more people coming, that when they put in this level of effort, we're going to respond. And we need to ensure that next time they have the opportunity to do this, they do it again the same and better, and we respond and, and, and turn up and appreciate that thing. I think it's really important. If there's anything that went wrong for you that didn't work, let them know. and uh, Drop them an email, get their contact details, and let the guys at SDV know. They care a lot, and I think... Um, as one, of, I think it was their first, but I may be a little bit wrong, but the first big event they've run where it hasn't been part of another convention or an expo or something like that, and I think they excelled. I really, really genuinely do. So feedback to them, guys. It's really important you do, no matter what FFG game you play, um, let them know. And the last thing I want to talk about is setting a positive example. Um, really, I think there's... Um, I think in any community, you, know, you get the guys here on stream, the top players, the community heads, the people who you see on social media a lot and the people who just get names just because they're part of podcasts or they get invited places. And those people are really important to the community. It gives someone to meet. And I can't imagine how hard it is for those guys. Like Dave Hoyland, for example, I walked over and was like, hey, Dave, not even thinking, he doesn't know me at all. <laughs> he doesn't He doesn't know me from anyone else. Um, and those guys you know, must have a hard time having people just walk over and you know, just introduce themselves, just start talking to them because we've all seen them or heard them or kind of felt kind of close to them and, and listened to their, their you know, feedback and information and ideas. And when you're you know, with those people, or when you're one of those people, set a positive example for what you want to see from the community. And, you know, um, you know, people like Alex, Alex White organizing the events that anyone could turn up with a team to. And um, things like Dave um, and Tim Fowler being so clean and clear about their gameplay. Um, like for example, Dave Hoyland, I, I don't want, this is sounding like I'm just lo in love with this guy right now, but like, and honestly, he does a little thing with in, uh, industrial genomics where um, he puts a little dice beside how many cards he has face down uh, in, in his archives. He doesn't have to do that, but it helps the camera. It helps his opponent. Um, I did ask him during one of his games just to make sure it was right because I think it was wrong. And that's an extra thing for him to do. He doesn't have to. It is important he keeps it right because you don't want to give misinformation. But those little things, they make a big difference to the viewership, to your opponents and to the community as a whole. And people see... Um, whenever shining examples are set, but they also see whenever people are given by balls for like turning up late or for not doing appropriate deck lists and stuff. And you know, really, if you're you know, if you're going to be part of the community, you know, you, everyone plays by the same rules. Everyone plays by the same deck list rules. You turn up on time. You register on time. You pay your money. It's a commitment from every person there. So you know, be part of that. Take take that ownership. Um, I've rambled a lot, 23 minutes, wow! I'm pretty sure I haven't talked about a bunch of the pictures as well, so I might just do a random spamming here at the end of any of the pictures I haven't spoken about. Um, if you've watched this long, well played. It was an absolute pleasure getting to meet so many of you. I very much hope I get to do so in the future. And uh, yeah, all the very best, guys. And uh, yeah, keep on running.